Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today I wanted to talk about a uh, deformer called, if we go to animation module here in the pull down menu, animation, create deformer, point on curve, the last one in my list here. So before I get started with the actual deformer, first let's set up a scene and I'm just going to create a simple extrude with uh, two curves like we've talked about before. I'm going to go back to the surfaces module and then under the surfaces menu I have extrude right here. So uh, if you don't know how extrude works in the surfaces menu I do have a video going over it. You can click right here in the middle of my scene and go straight to that video and get a refresher on how extrude works. Uh, but first I'm just going to create a curve. I'm using my CV curve tool. You can use any curve tool you wish. And I'm just going to make a simple line here and then I'll go to create NURBS primitives circle let's make a small circle and I'm going to hold the C key to snap the curve I'm going to hide my grid too so you can see it better hopefully hold C to snap the curve middle click and drag on my curve so it snaps to it and move it all the way to the end and then I'm going to rotate this up like this so I'm going to make this uh, tube shape select my profile circle first, shift select my path, surfaces, extrude and I'm just going to reset all my settings at path, at component, extrude, like that so a really simple tube shape like this so now that I have my tube shape, let's say I want to animate this thing, I want to have this uh, wire or whatever undulate or move around based on, let's say it's a phone line or something and you're moving the phone, you want the wire to kind of move with it and such. And you can use a skeleton and, and like rig it and all that kind of thing. But it is also there's lots of ways of doing things in Maya. And one way we can animate this wire is by animating the points on the curve. And like if anything, there's lots of ways to do that. You can hit your you can select your control vertices and select one and just animate them on a point by point basis. That's definitely doable. If I go to uh display UI elements. I'm going to break off this menu. I'm going to turn on the time slider and range slider. That brings me my animation controls down here at the bottom of my screen. And if you just press the S key when you have a CV selected, hit S. You'll see this little red line show up and it means it set a key there. And then I'm going to scroll forward in my timeline, let's say up to, I don't know, frame 20. Move this over here and press S to set a key. And then if you scrub my timeline, you'll see that my wire now moves, just like I want it to. But, you know, if you are if you have a whole scene of objects, and this wire is just one of them, selecting the individual CVs and setting the keys for them, and then if you want to change something, that they go back and find the CV you want to change, it might be a little bit more of a hassle having to find these CV points and animate them again, or change the animation again, or something. So using a point on curve deformer can make that whole process a little bit easier. So I'm going to undo before I did my key setting. All right. So now I got back to my original shape. I'm going to select my curve, control A to open the attributes and just check out our curve history here. And you'll see my min max value is 0 to 5 and I have 5 spans. That's all perfectly fine, but I'm just going to go to Edit Curves, Rebuild Curve, Options, and I have a video going over all these options. Just click right here on the screen and you can check out the uh, all these options in their fullest detail if you're interested. And I'm just going to increase the number of spans to say 10. Alright, and Rebuild. So I just rebuilt my curve. So now my min-max value is 0 to 1, which is fine spans are 10. So I have a few more spans in here than before. If I right click and choose control vertex I'm just going to turn on the uh, x-ray which is shading x-ray here so you can kind of see through the shape. You can see now I have a few more points to work with than I had before. That's what increasing the spans did for me. So point on curve, how does it work? Let's just hide show NURB surfaces. Just going to hide that surface completely. Turn off x-ray. So now we're just looking at my curve here. 
I right click on the curve and choose curve point then I can left click on my curve and just kind of drag along and find a point I like or you can do that to, to distinguish a point on the curve or you can right click on the curve and choose edit point and just choose one of these points that are already here and it might be a little hard to see them in the YouTube video just based on the video size and such but there are these little purple X's along the length of my curve and these are edit points that I can select and move just like you could control vertices or CDs which are a bit more like influencers while edit points are on the curve and stay on the curve so a little bit more of a dictator when it comes to how they influence the curve shape so you can choose an edit point which is also a point on this curve or right click and choose curve point and make your own wherever you wish okay so you're just picking a point on this curve let's say I'm gonna pick that one hold down shift so I can drag another one hold down shift drag another one so I have these three points pinpointed on my curve as to where I want a deformer to be placed okay now, with these points selected I'm gonna go back to the animation module and then create the formers point on curve so I have these little locators which is what they're called locators and they're just like null objects they're just little points in space that are uh, visibly indicated by this little uh, crosshair shape they're not renderable you don't you're not going to see them in a movie or a game that you're making but they're there as a handle that you can grab a hold of and by default all of these locators pivot point has been placed in the center of the scene which is at the origin if I unhide my grid you can see here these dark lines where they intersect that's the origin of the scene and their handles or selection handles are automatically placed at the origin but I'd rather have them centered on the individual locators themselves I'm gonna hide my grid again and so I'm gonna select these locators that have been given to me and go to modify center pivot so now each of their pivots have been centered on themselves and now a little bit easier to move them so you can see when I move this the curve is now being manipulated and change the background color with alt B to something that's a little bit more easier to see maybe it's moving the curve with this handle selected and now this handle if I close the attribute editor you see it has translate XYZ rotate XYZ it has all the translation channels like any other object which can have keys set for them very easily and visibly in the channel box so if I hit the S key it the S key uh, by the way is just a shortcut for setting a key all these channels turn pink color which means a key has been set for all of these channels if I undo that I can choose a channel individually or a group of channels individually and right click them and choose key selected and it will just set keys for those channels by themselves and these are the translate channels or the move channels X Y and Z so then if I move forward my timeline move my locator and I have auto key turned on so it automatically sets a key after I do something like that and now I scrub my timeline you'll see that that locator moves changing the curve shape and this is not using the curve components it's not using the CVs which you see here or edit points or anything like that it's using this handle that you can just select and grab and move so if you have a full scene full of objects you can just select these little handles and just move them without having to select the curve right click there we go right click and choose control vertices or whatnot to try and manipulate the curve shape let me show their surfaces again so we're back with my tube here so I've animated that handle and you can see how the curve changes shape because of those keys that have been set let's look at the options now I'm going to create the former point on curve options not much here if we edit reset we have a keep original checkbox and what this means is that it will attempt to keep the original shape of the curve now let's go into the attributes control a for attributes so you see here I have least squares modifier tab that's the tab for these point constraints you see I have several of them here all listed here in the attributes in the order that I place them in and the U value 
is where along the curve they are located. If I select my curve, I'm just going to hide the surface again. So I select my curve and go to the curve attributes, which is here. You see my min max value is 0 to 1. So in the very far left end of this curve, the U value is 0. And the very far right end of this curve, the U value is 1. That's the min max value of this curve. So if I choose my points again, my least squares modifier one tab here, you'll see I have these different point constraint uh, attributes, and they each have a U value. And this U value is telling you where on the curve they're located. The one, that's to the, the one with the lowest U value is the one that's located the furthest to the left side of this curve, which in this case is point constraint 2, which is a U value of 0 0.074. So if you change these U values, you're essentially changing the placement of these points on the curve. So if I want this point here to be at the very far end of this curve, I can change the U value from 0 0.074 to simply 0, hit enter. And the position of the point didn't change, but the curve shape changed. So that now this point that I'm moving around here manipulates the very far end of the curve. So you can change these positions all just based on this U value. Then you have a weight slider, and the weight slider is just how much influence that point has compared to another point. Let's say this point here, this is the next highest U value uh, constraint on this curve. That would be this one, 0 0.0349. If I change this one also to 0 and hit Enter, you see now I have two point constraints in the same location, the same U value location on this curve. Let me change the background again here. So what that means is that both of these points have one a value of one weight on the same point on the curve, which means you'll see here as I move the two locators around, the point on the curve is positioned in the middle between the two locators, equal distance between the two. If I change the weight of one of these curves to be lower, let's say 0.25, you'll notice on the left side how the curve endpoint's position is changing based on which locator has more weight. This locator I have selected is point constraint 0. The weight of it is lowering, so the weight of the other one, which is still 1, is higher than this one's weight. It still has weight. It's at 0.221 here or whatever. So this one, so the point on the curve is not snapping to this locator because there's still a little bit of weight from this locator still affecting it. But the influence of this locator is greater, and so the point is dragged toward it. It's like two magnets, and based on how powerful one magnet is compared to the other one is where this point on the end of the curve is going to favor. If I increase this locator point's weight value up again to 1, because they're both 1, they're both equal value, it will center itself between the two points. If I go back to this, if I go to point constraint 2 and change its weight to be lower, you'll see the opposite happens where the point will favor this locator's location compared to the other based on how much weight it has. So you can't have points in the same position. You can't have uh, point on curve deformers on the same at the same position on the curve. You just have to adjust their weight values, and these weight values are also keyable. So you can animate these weight values and change the position of the curve points throughout a scene based on what values you want by animating these weights. If I go back to my options, point on curve options. You'll see the other option is point weight, and you can adjust how much weight that point has before you create it. And by default, it's 1, or the highest weight you can have. And that's pretty much curve on point in a nutshell. Again, you can animate these, and I'm going to go over more animation controls and such in future videos, like how to set keys and change keys and edit keys and all that kind of stuff. But for now, I just wanted to go over the point on curve deformer, bring back my surface and 
turn off x-ray there we go so, yeah hope you enjoyed this video hope you learned a little bit about uh, point on curve deformers if you have any requests for future videos let me know thanks again for watching and hope you uh, subscribe and keep watching as we go along on this journey of getting everything in Maya down on YouTube in one nice location you can find it thanks a lot guys